you for being here with us. Thanks here so much for Real having Life. me. We are going to talk some money today. Yes. So it's it's something <laughs> kind of important. You've written this amazing book, really. It is very good. Thank Living you. well, spending less, and you had some amazing practical tips. But first, I want to talk about what the good life is not. That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> because, because we think the good life is full of stuff and things mm -hmm. and everything yes. that money can't buy, yes. but you had a different experience. Yes. Well, actually, that is exactly what I thought the good life was mm -hmm. um, for much of my life. And that's really what the book is based off yeah. on, ultimately, mm -hmm. is realizing that the good life was not at all what I thought it was. And for me, growing up, I always had this vision that the good life meant, you know, a big house, house. and a nice car mm -hmm. and a great wardrobe and flying around in private jets and, you know, the celebrity Ooh, lifestyle yeah. that we see on television. Right. I wanted that. Mm -hmm. And that was what I thought was the good life. If yes. I have all those things, then mm -hmm. my life will be good. Right. Well, I started to learn mm -hmm. um, the hard way that life was not good with all of these things. Right. And so it really started to turn a transformation into my heart, which is how the book came about. Which actually you started to go into debt. Did no, you go into debt so or did you? Debt. Just... Luckily, I never went into debt because my husband is very good with money. Good. So thanks to him, I yeah. didn't go into debt. But I was spending more than we had. And had I continued on that path, we could have gone into debt. Right, right. What happened was we were fighting a lot about yeah, money, a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot. And I think so many couples struggle with this. You know, my husband is a saver. I'm a spender. So uh -huh. he had worked really hard. He had done really well for mm -hmm. himself. He had saved all this money. And here I was spending it all. Yes. And it was starting to cause all this tension mm -hmm. in our marriage. And we got to a point where we didn't know if we were going to make it. And yeah. so we, we decided that something had to give. He put me on a really strict budget. Yes. And I started writing about it. I started yeah. my blog, Living While Spending Less, mm -hmm. which was really just my way of holding myself accountable. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because I knew what I was doing. It was because I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, the, wow. the book came out of that. It's yeah. just a journey of learning to live well on a budget. I love how when your husband put you on a budget, <laughs> you immediately cut down the food part and so to give you more money to spend on the necessities yes. of life, like things for the yes. house, accessories, yes. shoes, you know, the important I stuff. I did not start out with such noble purposes. It really <laughs> was. If I, I figured if I started using coupons and spent less on food, I would have mm -hmm. more for food, mm -hmm. for shoes. And... Um, God really worked on me and yeah. really worked on changing my heart. And it happened very slowly yeah. and it happened over time. But eventually I started to realize that a life well lived was nothing, had nothing to do with what I had, but mm. so much to do with who I am. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, one of the chapters in your book is about contentment is a choice. Yes. And so often we think, well, if I could just get that new car, I'll even save for it. Once I get that new car, I'll be satisfied. Yes. I'll be content. But contentment is what? It doesn't happen from material things. Right. It never happens. And I think we live in a consumerist culture. I mean, yeah. the message that is the, thrown at us constantly from all the magazines and all the television shows and everywhere yes. we go, the billboards, everything we see Consume. tells us consume more. And if you have this, mm -hmm. you'll be this. If you have this, you'll be this. If you mm -hmm. have this, you'll be this. And none of that ever works and right. none of that ever fills us up. Right. And so for me, it was filling my house with beautiful things, yes. thinking that was going to fill me up and mm -hmm. it never did. But really contentment comes far much more down to the, the way, the purpose of your heart and right. realizing right in your heart and having this attitude of gratitude in your heart right. that what I have is already enough and who I am is already enough. And Amen. once you Love can that. get that down, the material stuff starts to matter a whole lot less. Yes. And you also said something that I, that I loved, less stuff equals more joy. Yes. I yes. mean, that is the opposite, <laughs> like you just said, of what the world is telling us. The more Very stuff, so. the more joy you'll have, but you're and saying the opposite. so wrong. The more stuff we have, the more stuff we have to take care of, and the more right. stuff we have to clean up, and the yep. more stuff we have to deal with and fix and replace, then it just causes more stress. I know. And for me, I found this lesson out with my kids, and yeah. because I one day took all their toys away, and yeah. so that ended up being this huge every catalyst. Toy. Every single last one. You know, I think as parents we do that to our kids. If you don't clean up, I'm going to take them away. Yeah. Well, one day I actually you did. did it. And ah. it was crazy. <laughs> um, and I thought it was going to be this huge turning point for them, where they were going to realize they needed to clean up and. 
it was a huge turning point for us, but for exactly the opposite reason. Yeah. It made me realize that I was filling up our lives with stuff we didn't need, mm -hmm. and it completely transformed our family. What's the number one thing you did to transform your mind? Because it's, it's a way of thinking from, you know, living well is what the world's saying to here's what living well is according to God's standard. What yes. was like sort of some of the key scriptures or the, some of the key things that you did that turned that frame of mind? For me, it was just a simple prayer every single day, yeah. just praying for God to change my heart and to take away my desires of the things of this world, yeah. because that is my temptation, that is my struggle, mm -hmm. and I know that about myself, and it's something that I think I will always struggle with, and yes. so it's a prayer that I have to pray every day. I yeah. need grace every single day. Yes. And, and that prayer, I mean, that's it's a scary prayer to pray because when we pray those kind of things, God will answer yes. and He will change our hearts mm -hmm. and we have to be ready and we have to be willing to listen and to make those changes. But it's definitely a constant prayer in my life. And it opens your life to focus on what's really important. Yes. Like what is like the number one thing that is most important to you in life? The number one thing, I would say definitely my family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I feel like right now, because, and I talk about this a little bit in my book, mm -hmm. is, is I, through this journey of learning to live well on a budget, I found my, sort of my sweet spot. I'm blogging, which I love. I yeah. have this amazing career that I get to travel all over the place. I get to meet interesting people. I get to write books. I, yes. And it's a wonderful thing that I could have never, ever envisioned. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all because I am horrible with money. So I think sometimes God uses yeah. our biggest mistakes and our biggest yeah, failures and, awesome. and uses them to his glory. Can I read something out of your book? It's sure. so good. More is never enough. If your house looks like this, then you'll be satisfied. If you drive this car, you'll be successful. If you use this makeup, you'll be beautiful. If you wear these clothes, you'll be enviable. If you use this tablet, you'll be organized. If you eat this food, you'll be skinny. If your child has this toy, he'll be content. This will be the thing that changes your life. This will be the thing that fills you up. But the truth is living well is living really according to God's plan and best for our life. Thank you so much, Ruth, for Thank sharing part of your so story. Thank you so much for having me. It was Thank an you. honor to have you here. We'll Thank be you. right back.